So we're in an era of generating huge amounts of data. Uh, but the key is not what do we get out of that. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, I was at the uh, EMC event yesterday uh, where they announced uh, a significant project of building uh, their Hawk SQL technology on the Hadoop distribution. And they had, uh, 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 what's the guy's name? Har uh, Harper Reed, yes, sorry, from the, uh, the CTO of the Obama campaign. Uh, who joined on stage at the EMC event, I thought Harper said something very uh, insightful, that he hated the term big data, because big data wasn't the point. Uh, the point is big answers. How do you actually get value out of data? And that's obviously our challenge as an industry, uh, technology and architecture challenge, in addition to a number of other challenges, to get value out of this vast amount of data that we're generating, and in many cases now learning how to store, but then how do we extract insight from it? And you know, you could look at big data as just another big buzzword, but at in, in Intel we believe very fundamentally that big data has the potential to not only transform business models, and we're seeing that as people use data as the foundational element, the foundational asset in the delivery of business, but it has the, the ability to transform society. It has the ability to uh, deliver more personalized health care, more effective health care, more cost effectively. The ability to manage our scarce energy supply uh, more effectively to manage traffic, the ability to drive greater levels of public safety. We have an opportunity to harness uh, the power of data, not just to drive commercial success, but to drive success that impacts the entire human race. And that's a huge, exciting opportunity for us to participate in. And Intel is, you know, one part of the data center group in our software business. Uh, but the big data trend transcends the data center and the cloud and the cloud back end. And in fact, it's intrinsic to our corporate strategy of driving comp computing solutions to affect the lives of every human being on the planet in this decade. And it comes from a virtuous cycle. We used to think of a virtuous cycle of richer applications demanding the need for more capable hardware, demanding the need, uh, enabling even richer applications. And that really was a spiral that drove our industry for the first several decades. But we're now we're in a spiral around rich data providing richer experiences uh, experiences on consumer devices that are more intuitive, uh, that are more immersive, that are more anticipative of the consumer's needs based on the data that the devices have in many cases from the cloud. And as you get those rich, immersive experiences on the devices, you then generate even more data. And that equally applies to uh, those edge devices that have the ability to both generate more data to gather insight at the edge and machine-to-machine -machine communications as well as being able to take data from the cloud and provide local knowledge and intelligence that affects commercial and society life. So we have an opportunity to drive a new cycle of data and experiences driving data. And those experiences on the consumer devices are really critical because we are delivering capabilities on consumer devices that are very, very powerful and rich, obviously with our long heritage in the PC franchise, but with a growing position in smartphones and tablets. So big data for Intel is not just about driving a data center opportunity, and I'll highlight later in my presentation just how much we think it can affect growth in the data center business, but it's fundamental to driving a cycle of getting computing devices into the hands of consumers, computing devices at the edge of this vast network that are ever more capable to both consume and generate data. Intel has been really uh, driving a lot of the technologies that have led to the tools to handle big data. You know, for some period of time, much of the innovation that's driven our core technology, the CPU technology, the storage networking technology uh, within our roadmaps has really been around the high-performance computing environment, driving incredible levels of computational scale, and then the very, very large cloud service providers who have a volume scale of the services that really is, is unmatched. And those two technologies, the kind of massive scale of the data centers of cloud, and the massive demands of computational density in HPC are really driving much of our roadmap around the nature of the CPU architectures, the nature of the way we interconnect them, the place we're driving memory. And both of them have an interesting characteristic that they're both driven in many cases by open source software. Uh, not entirely, but to a large extent, we're seeing a lot of the technology where open source might have once been viewed as a more cost-effective implementation of packaged applications in many cases now, from the Lustre parallel file system uh, to Hadoop to OpenStack as an orchestration framework, we're seeing the open source technology really drive a lead in figuring out how to handle the scale and the requirements of either HPC or cloud. 
And that's put us in a unique position to really have some insight into what capabilities are required at a platform level, not just a hardware platform, but also at a software platform level uh, to drive big data and handle uh, the volume, variety, and velocity of data that we're starting to see. So Intel's strategy for big data is very simple. We want to democratize the insights that can be gained from big data from the edge to the cloud. Uh, we have a significant initiative at the edge of the network called the Intelligent Systems Framework to try to make sure that the data gathering is more secure, more intelligent, more trusted, uh, and we can get ever more uh, value at the edge of the network uh, because obviously the extent to which you can intelligently filter data and get rid of the noise at the edge of the network makes the data that you gather and centralize ever more valuable. Within the cloud, we're driving platform technologies uh, for a range of solutions. And one of them I'll talk about today is Hadoop. And we think of Hadoop as a foundational technology, but we're working closely with companies like SAP on the HANA technology, which we view as really critical to handling uh, large sets of data. So we have an edge strategy and a cloud strategy. And uh, one of the foundational technologies that we see around big data is the Hadoop framework. Let me talk a little bit about Intel and Hadoop. We've actually been at this for a while. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Hadoop, Hadoop is a framework of a dozen or so projects in open source that all work together to store, organize, and get insights out of mass amounts of data. Uh, and Intel started our exploration of Hadoop back in 2009. We formed a lab with uh, Yahoo, uh, who brought the Hadoop framework to market in open source and HP, uh, to do some research and start to understand the nature of the workloads. And from that, we started understanding how to standardize benchmarks to get a sense of how to optimize that, the technology so that the benchmarks reflected, reflected real-world workloads. Uh, and then, obviously, once you have a benchmark, the next step is to begin to tune and optimize. And about this time, in uh, 2011, we had a number of customers who came to us in China who were leading-edge companies who were struggling to get the value out of their Hadoop infrastructure and knew that we had some expertise in this area. And we started working with those companies to get some better business results at, of the volume scale of data they had. And these are very large companies like China Unicom and China Mobile who have hundreds of millions of subscribers and generate billions of call data records and have a lot of data to handle. And we realized that there was a gap in the community around driving the performance, security, and resiliency into the Hadoop framework so that more customers could get business value. So we commercialized that product offering with our first release uh, in 2012, uh, went to our second major release at the end of 2012, uh, and what we're here today to talk about is our third major release of Intel's distribution of Apache Hadoop software uh, to really address some of those critical requirements. Uh, so we've been at this for a while, and you can see uh, the commercial adoption we've had uh, largely in China around smart cities, telecommunications, uh, retail, obviously the web companies, uh, healthcare, uh, and there's a number of other verticals and even functional areas that we are targeting to move beyond this. So we have a multi-year history in understanding the Hadoop framework, working with it technically, optimizing it, and delivering the Hadoop framework in commercial environments for customers. And what I'm very pleased to announce today is we're announcing global availability of Intel's distribution for Apache Hadoop software. And we're really focused in three areas. One is we want to drive the, the framework to take advantage of the latest technology. And this is a very significant step. The, the Hadoop framework has enormous potential. Uh, today, I think it's often viewed as, as an offline, very slow batch processing engine for relatively unsophisticated types of data. It can do a lot more if we're to harness the underlying technology that we know is available. And I'll highlight some examples of this in the next few minutes. The other thing we want to do is ideally, as organizations store their data within a Hadoop cluster, uh, we'd like that data to be available to a broad variety of applications. So ideally, uh, Hadoop will be a foundational layer uh, within organizations that then you can build a variety of applications on top of. And that's one of the gaps we see in the ecosystem today. We have a lot of people integrating Hadoop into very sophisticated vertical solutions, and that's a wonderful approach uh, for those kinds of applications. Uh, we also have a number of venture startups that are driving innovation at a very rapid pace. 
But many organizations are looking for a large, stable company to establish that foundation so they can bet long-term to innovate around a stable platform. And that's one of the things we're looking for. We're not looking to move up the stack and provide vertical applications. And instead, we feel like we're a good bet uh, for a variety of ecosystem players to bank on our horizontal distribution and build innovation around it. And part and parcel of that uh, element of being a good partner is to protect, nurture, and drive a common open source foundation for Apache Hadoop. We've uh, become a platinum sponsor of the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, we're initiating a number of, of uh, uh, program projects within the Apache community to drive Hadoop forward. We view ourselves as stewards and drivers of open source to make sure that the, the technology itself stays consistent and continues to evolve and grow. We're very, very committed to making sure uh, that customers who are banking on Hadoop today know that even if they choose Intel's distribution, they're not getting locked into a technology. And be we're doing that because we believe that's the best way to drive growth in the overall industry. Let me talk a little bit more detail about the product. And the first thing I'll note is we are delivering a configuration monitoring and management tool that will remain unique to Intel as part of an overall solution. And we feel this isn't part of the, the core Apache kernel in the data path, if you will, uh, that it really is an, a utility that surrounds it that's not fundamental toward the use of the underlying technology. Everything else you see on the slide, we are going to drive uh, for any enhancement we make uh, to go back into the open source community. And our goal is that those enhancements, which are all driven by uh, customer demands to, to improve the performance, security, or resiliency, of the framework, that all of those get back into the open source community as quickly as we possibly can so that most of our innovations become a rising tide that lifts all boats. Uh, so you can see we've done a lot of work with Hive and HBase uh, around the data layer. We're doing a lot of work to improve the performance of MapReduce and Yarn, uh, and we're doing continual work to provide the performance and security in the Hadoop distributed file system or the st foundational storage layer. Uh, the gray areas are ones where we are simply integrating and validating uh, the rest of the open source projects into a complete Hadoop solution. Now, where do we see advantages in the technology? If we could advance. There we go. So one of the things we're doing is taking advantage of our, our platform heritage, our hardware platform heritage. Uh, we put into Xeon processors several years ago instructions that accelerate the AES algorithm, which is an, a common encryption algorithm used in things ranging from disk encryption to SSL transactions on the web. By taking advantage of these instructions within the Hadoop framework, we're improving encryption up to 20 times the speed. Then when you get to that level of performance gain, it really shifts from being a performance capability into being really an ability to turn on encryption or not, because the performance overhead of encrypting and decrypting data uh, without the, this level of acceleration becomes prohibitive. So we're basically enabling customers to secure their data inside a Hadoop environment. We recently added the capability within the framework to take advantage of solid state disks and have been doing some testing with our own cache acceleration software, which is value added software that we started delivering late last year. And the combination of enabling access to SSDs, which is part of open source, and then building in our caching software, we're seeing drive substantial performance gains that I'll show in just a few minutes. We've done a lot to optimize queries in Hive. And we know that ultimately Hive and the current state of HBase are not going to serve all the needs. And we're very excited about various projects and solutions around the industry to get more full SQL compatibility on the Hadoop framework. Uh, but it's also, in many use cases, by simply accelerating Hive, you have an opportunity to have Hadoop cover more opportunities than otherwise would. We're also building in other capabilities that are intrinsic to the CPU. So our AVX and SSE instructions really drive that parallelism and, uh, and compression and other kinds of math algorithms to be substantially faster on Xeon. And then finally, within that management layer, which will remain unique to Intel, uh, we're building some really cool technology uh, that came out of Intel Labs where we actually use Hadoop on Hadoop, as we call it. We collect metrics from the performance of the cluster and then use machine learning algorithms to suggest improvements to the configuration settings uh, in an automated fashion. 
Uh, and then with those, we've seen 30% performance gains on exactly the same data on exactly the same software. Uh, and given that uh, over time, users are going to use their clusters for many things, having this tuning capability is a huge advantage. Again, it's not intrinsic to the operation of the open source project, so customers aren't locked into it, but it's a utility that makes it far easier for customers to get the most out of their infrastructure. These are just a few examples of the kinds of technologies we're driving into the framework. So we are uh, obviously participating in a new business for Intel. And we've made the investments required to have the support to back up the open source framework. So we're selling to end users uh, offerings that have uh, either 24 by 7 support or 8 by 5 support to have two different price points. Uh, we plan to be very market competitive in this space. Uh, we don't plan to either be a super premium offering nor a low cost leader. We really want to drive the best technology and participate in this market and help it grow. And of course, as we work with a range of partners, some of whom you'll hear from later, uh, we have the opportunity to decompose any of these technologies and do custom innovation to fit the solutions that those partners want to bring the market the most. So we'll have some integrated offerings for end users with kind of a classic open source model of service and support. And then we'll also have technology collaborations that could be very, very unique to each of our partners. And why do we think, you know, we have the background to provide this? It really is a heritage of working with technology. You know, we have the most intimate knowledge of, you know, the uh, com computational performance by our leadership position with Xeon processors. I think that's pretty well known. It may not be well known that we're number one in enterprise solid state disks. Uh, we're number one in 10 gig ethernet. And these are the technologies that in combination, the computation, the solid state memory, the networking that all balance together to provide the best results for a Hadoop cluster. And this is very critical because uh, as we get to the point where Hadoop is more interactive and everybody in our industry knows that that is the path we're getting to, the underlying infrastructure is taxed substantially. On top of the hardware capabilities, we are actually building a, a good portfolio of system software. I mentioned our caching software. Uh, that's file-based caching, so it has a lot lower latency. Uh, we last year acquired the company that is the primary contributor to the Luster parallel file system, uh, and we're now working with customers to layer Hadoop on top of Luster, uh, which in many high-performance computing environments has the potential to do uh, both analytics on the data as well as simulation and modeling all in the same environment. We have uh, our data center manager product, which offers optimizations around the power monitoring and consumption for large-scale data centers. And as Hadoop becomes a bigger part of data centers, that power consumption will be ever more critical. And we've recently been uh, awarded by Forrester as a contender in the API management space with our Expressway Service Gateway product, which is basically a secure way to connect legacy systems and expose the data from those systems uh, as data sources to either Hadoop cluster or to other applications for developers. These are all really system software kinds of products that enable some of the modern usages that we're seeing as gaps. And that nascent software portfolio built on our long legacy of leadership and the hardware platforms gives us a unique capability to think of Hadoop from the ground up. And we embrace that position, uh, that there are other people far more capable than we are to really work at that solution level for customers. But what we can do uniquely is establish the optimized layer of Hadoop as a foundational technology. And to talk a little bit more about this concept of optimizations, I'd like to invite uh, Paul Perez, Vice President and GM of Computing Systems for Cisco up uh, to get uh, another point of view. Paul, welcome. Are you expecting a deferring point of view? <laughs> yeah. So Paul, uh, tell us a little bit about how you see the Hadoop environment and the opportunities for optimization. Um, this is actually pretty interesting because <clears throat> Cisco's strategy is to be a number one IT provider in what we call the Internet of Everything. And that Internet of Everything, I'll define in a moment. But uh, we started executing this strategy a few years ago. And one of the first things that we did was expand our portfolio into the compute space. We, were in, we went to build an ecosystem of partners, technology partners, go-to-market partners, solution partners, 
to help us enter the space, and at a time when the industry was skeptical of Cisco's commitment to compute, Intel stood with us. And through that collaboration, the joint innovation, we propelled our Blade server market in private cloud and virtualization to a number two position here in the US. Um, and even uh, analysts like Gartner are talking about how Cisco is in the top two vendors under consideration for private cloud deployments and also increasingly gaining traction in service provider. So that's what we have done up until now. What we're going to do in the future is look at how we can transform and improve the way people live, work, learn, and play. And we increasingly see huge opportunities to do so in the intersection of hybrid cloud, machine to machine, and computationally intensive analytics. And learning from history, looking to build our ecosystem, and we surveyed the industry, we quickly centered on Intel, not necessarily as a partner, but primarily as an innovation partner to help us drive the technology. And my expectation would be that three years from now, analysts will be talking about how the Intel distribution for Apache Hadoop coupled with the Cisco, UCS, and Nexus data center technologies will be the substrate, the preferred platform on which to build analytic solution environments based on Hadoop. So, Paul, I know we have uh, a lot planned that we're not prepared to, uh, to talk about today, uh, but it's also fair to say that even in the short term, uh, we have an opportunity for customers who are interested in uh, Hadoop, uh, optimized Hadoop infrastructure. Uh, you're open for business now, and they can call, and we have solutions that we're working on that are much more short term as well, right? Yeah, I brought a credit card swiper for my phone, too. <laughs> um, no, I. <laughs> I think that uh, we have already spent a fair amount of time tuning your distribution for UCS environments. It's number one. Uh, number two, we already have expressions of interest. Uh, we have gained a fair amount of traction in multiple industries with what we call our common platform architecture for Hadoop and analytics in financial services, banking, insurance, retail, transportation, healthcare, media and entertainment, and uh, federal government as well. So I would expect that in the very short term, we'll drive demand of that common platform architecture with Intel's distribution of Apache Hadoop. And we have created a framework in which we can then expand from there and consider some pretty deep technology and innovation collaborations to That's expand handy. the ecosystem. Well, thanks for joining us. And we'll hear more from Paul in just a little bit. Thanks a lot, Paul. Appreciate it. Anytime. So talk a little bit more uh, about specifics about how this technology uh, delivers a cu cumulative value. What we've done here uh, is take a TerraSort benchmark, which is a terabyte of data, uh, into the MapReduce framework on a legacy cluster of about 10 systems. Uh, and this benchmark, when you look at kind of a relatively standard configuration, it will be quite common in the industry today. Uh, the old Xeon 5600 processor, uh, you know, hard drives with one gig Ethernet. You know, this would be a, with the uh, kind of a standard Apache open source uh, distribution of Hadoop. Uh, you can see that this particular benchmark takes greater than four hours. And this gets to the concept that uh, uh, I've heard uh, Hadoop referred to as more of a pen pal than an instant messenger uh, kind of solution. And you can see if you have to wait four hours, then, you know, you go home and come back the next day. But let's take a look at when you try to start to apply the new technology. The first thing you do is take the new Xeon E5 2600, which is the processor we launched last spring. Uh, you take that, and all of a sudden, the cluster performs 50% faster. Uh, you go from that and start to add solid-state disks, which we've enabled in our distribution, and we hope to be available in all distributions very soon, uh, and you get an 80% improvement by adding SSDs. Uh, you go from 1 gig to 10 gig and get a 50% improvement on top of that. And then finally, you use our software, which has a lot of the optimizations that we hope to get into open source as quickly as possible. But today, if you use our distribution, you get another 40% performance gain. And the cumulative effect of all these technologies together is that something that took greater than four hours gets to about seven minutes. Uh, and you can start to see as we move forward and look at even further optimizations, we can get to even very, very complex uh, al uh, uh, applications running on Hadoop that get to be uh, closer and closer to human real time. 
which is our ultimate goal. So we definitely have proven the opportunity to take the framework at a low level and optimize it from the hardware up to deliver a much better user experience. And we've been proven in the enterprise. We are not announcing a beta version. We're announcing uh, version 3.0 available in the second quarter of this year globally. Uh, you can see I mentioned China Mobile and China Unicom. Uh, we have a lot of other customers in China that wouldn't be as well recognized in the Western world. Uh, but we also have been working with customers here in the United States in preparation for our global launch. Uh, obviously, Intel IT gives us great feedback uh, on our own technology. Uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center doing a lot of work around the intersection of HPC and big data. Uh, McGraw-Hill is a significant publisher. Uh, and one of the things I'd like to do, though, is let you hear from one of those customers directly. Uh, I'd like to introduce onto stage Satnam, Satnam Alag, uh, the Vice President and CTO of uh, NextBio. Satnam, how are you doing? Pretty good. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Boyd. So uh, NextBio is not necessarily a household name, but the Soon. work you're doing could affect uh, many, many households in a very positive way. So why don't you share with us a little bit about NextBio and what your experience has been with Hadoop and the Intel distribution? Absolutely. Uh, cancer is the disease of the DNA. A random set of mutations in your genome, which is very big, with 3.2 billion base pairs of information, could be the cause behind cancer. In the last decade, there have been impressive gains in the area of full genome sequencing, which has, you know, the, the price has come down a million times in the last decade. And this has led to a deluge of big data being generated in this field. We at NextBio find ourselves at the intersection of modern medicine, genomics, and big data. At NextBio, we aggregate the world's genomic data, and by applying advanced analytics, we enable our customers to make new discoveries, to find new drugs, to find new biomarkers, or find the right therapy for the patient. Since NextBio is a data-driven engine, it would have been really impossible for a company such as ours to scale in a cost-effective manner had we not made initial investments in the area of Hadoop and other big data technologies. We personally like the MapReduce paradigm that enables us to write an algorithm once and then scale by adding additional nodes to the Hadoop cluster. About six months back, we took the Intel distribution for Apache Hadoop and applied it to one of our clusters. This cluster has run hundreds of thousands of jobs, manages over 10 billion rows of data in HBase, and by combining the right hardware for our workloads with the software, we've seen impressive gains in efficiencies. For example, we've been able to double the throughput by uh, increasing the density of the cores. We've seen impressive gains in compression performance. Lastly, you know, Boyd, uh, I think for companies such as NextBio, it is very important that uh, a lot of companies like Intel invest in this wonderful transformational technology, and it remains open. Well, thank you, Nate. And, uh, and uh, now you've gotten such great results. Are, are we done yet, or do we have some more work to do to get you better results to cure more people? Oh, we always have. The, the amount of data that we deal with is phenomenal, and it's just increasing exponentially. There's plenty of work to be done, and one day we will cure cancer. Absolutely. Thank you thank so you. much. Uh, I don't think anything could be more exciting for a technology company uh, than to have customers like NextBio be pushing us uh, on the edges of what is possible to do with the technology to do something as worthwhile uh, as ridding the world of the, of the disease of cancer. So it is incredibly exciting for us and motivating uh, to do even more to accelerate this framework as we move forward. You know, we are certainly not done yet uh, and that passion for innovation really spans uh, beyond the Hadoop framework as we know it today. Uh, we're doing work with Intel Labs. Last year we announced the Graph Builder program uh, as an open source project to layer graph analytics on top of the Hadoop framework. Uh, we were working last year on Project Panthera uh, to provide uh, standard ANSI SQL interfaces to the Hadoop framework uh, in an open fashion. Uh, and then just yesterday we announced Project Rhino uh, which is basically trying to get consistent security and authentication throughout the variety of Hadoop projects that all need to integrate 
Uh, the beauty of Hadoop is its modularity, but one of the challenges then is applying something like a security strategy as an overlay because it has to be consistent. So we are looking for ways not just to uh, optimize the Hadoop framework as it exists today, but in the open source community drive new projects that extend the utility uh, and provide even greater range of, of flexibility uh, for Hadoop for customers. And why do we plan to do this? You know, one of the, I mentioned earlier that this is part of a much larger strategy for Intel to drive devices and the cloud. But in the end, one of our biggest motivators is to drive faster growth of the data center business itself. And that's why we're so passionate about providing a commercial offering that stays true to open source principles. Because we believe that if we can accelerate Hadoop, you see the bottom line is a forecast for the volume of Xeon CPUs that will run Hadoop as it's currently projected. Uh, and we believe that if we can light up just a tiny fraction of the data will otherwise go wasted, that will go dark uh, over the next several years, we could pull in that volume ramp uh, by, from 2017 to 2015 uh, by a full two years. Uh, and we have an opportunity to then drive substantial growth for the entire industry because of making the data more valuable, more accessible, easier to use. That ultimately is a core piece of our strategy, and we believe that we can't just do this by enabling the open source community. We believe we have to be in the market participating with a commercial offering uh, that customers vote on with their pocketbooks to prove that the enhancements we're making are really the right direction for the industry and to make sure that Hadoop remains a stable, open foundation for our partners to innovate around. And I've talked about our partners. We have a very partner-focused strategy. We're going to continue to work with leading edge end users like NextBio to drive the technology. But our primary focus is in enabling a powerful ecosystem of customers who can innovate on top of Intel. That's our heritage as a company, to provide an incredibly advanced building block that enables innovation on top of it. And you see customers up here ranging from very large uh, software providers to smaller software providers, uh, service providers who are providing consulting and integration services, service providers who are providing cloud services, uh, system manufacturers who are looking to make Hadoop easier to consume as appliances. We have a broad range of partners who are lined up, each of these, uh, to work with Intel to innovate around our Intel distribution of the Apache Hadoop software to provide better solutions for customers. But at this point in the presentation, I'd like to let you hear from a variety of, those, of some of our key partners. What I'm going to do is invite up on stage uh, Grish Janeja, who's the uh, GM of the Big Data Initiative at Intel, and actually uh, the pioneer, the thought leader, the, the guy who has made all of this happen, and, and my uh, absolute uh, right-hand man uh, in building this business together. And he's going to host a panel of some very prominent partners who will share with you their perspectives on Hadoop uh, and their selection of the Intel distribution for Hadoop as an innovation foundation. Garish? Thanks, Boyd. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, Good morning and welcome to San Francisco for folks here and uh, those on the webcast. Uh, we have a great panel here for you, uh, some of the top companies who are our partners in the Hadoop project uh, that we are uh, talking about today. But I'll capture some keywords from Boyd before I invite them. Uh, we are announcing availability of the commercial uh, distribution, the Intel distribution for Apache Hadoop. Uh, we are working with ecosystem to allow them to innovate on top. And with that, I will begin to invite some of our partners, Richard Pledrider, Senior VP, HANA Engineering, SAP. Welcome, Richard. Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome. Um, Steve Guru, Vice President, Global Solutions, Savas, a CenturyLink company. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for coming. Uh, Ranga Rangachari, Vice President and General Manager, Storage Business, Red Hat Software. Welcome, Ranga. And uh, last but not the least, Paul Ferrez, Vice President and GM, Computing Systems, Cisco. Welcome, Paul. Back again. Good to see you again, George. Thank you. Please join. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. Um, so, uh, you know, Boyd talked a lot, uh, talked in, uh, in, with great passion about the Hadoop community and how we are innovating, Intel is innovating in both hardware and software to drive the community forward. And I think it'll be great to get um, perspective from each one of you because you represent some uh, tier one companies that are thought leaders in your own domain on what your view is on big data. So maybe start with you, Richard, uh, with SAP. Sure, yeah, glad to be here. So, uh, you know, big data uh, is, um, from our perspective, three major points. One is uh, big data in memory. 
Uh, second is a uh, complete view of uh, the entire enterprise uh, uh, data or the data elements end to end. And number three is productivity. So um, Boyd mentioned earlier technologies, inter-technology such as SS, uh, SSE, instruction sets. So with uh, SAP HANA, we've done tremendous work mapping entire ERP systems into memory, uh, entire data warehouses into memory, avoiding the need to move data from operational into warehousing infrastructures by essentially offering users a single version of the truth. That's the operational part. Yeah? There's uh, much more data, of course, to the enterprise. Okay, so the second part is a seamless view of and, and essentially taking big data to big insight, getting a complete view uh, of all aspects of uh, data that's available within the enterprise. Three is productivity. And that means to us, number one, how can I effectively extract uh, much of the data in Hadoop is textual? How can I effectively extract meaning, make sense of the semantics behind that? So SAP Data Services uh, is a product and a technology that's very effective and helps us and our customers to do accomplish that. Uh, number two is uh, business intelligence um, front-end tools, dashboards. Um, again, uh, increase uh, productivity, make... Uh, data available to end users, make it uh, touchable, uh, create insight, get, go from data to information. Uh, and uh, yeah, so often, of course, we have um, then also the need to have um, millions, uh, tens of millions of events that need to, we need to bring into this environment. So how can we, in addition to processing those events, create instantaneous insight as it flows uh, into Hadoop or into big data infrastructure? So, that's our view or then on productivity. Right. So the combination of the insights that need to be derived and a range of solutions that need to be brought together to derive that insight is, is really the key to get value out of big data. Right. That's exactly right. Right. Which, that's wonderful. Uh, so, Steve, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great to have a cloud service provider of, of your stature here uh, with us uh, as a partner. Thank you. And I'd love to get that perspective uh, on your view on big data as a cloud service provider. Sure. Happy to. <clears throat> so Savas is an uh, infrastructure utility services company. We provide uh, cloud hosting, co-location network services uh, around the world. We have 54 data centers uh, spread out uh, around the world. And, and our clients come to us for, for high-end services. And we, we host and manage uh, over 32 petabytes of data and, and of storage. And, and these clients are coming to us from many different vertical industries as well as public sector. And based on the amount of data that we look after for them, they're really beginning to ask us and drive us towards uh, big data services and solutions. So it seems a natural extension of our industrialized infrastructure utility services to be able to provide then big data offerings as well. Great. So as a cloud service provider, you have enterprise data, you have the customer data, and they're looking for you to provide and analytic services on top of that. Better ways to access the information, to store and retain the information securely, as well as then get the analysis out of it at the, at the back end. Right. Um, so uh, Ranga, again, uh, you know, Red Hat obviously is uh, no stranger to open source. You're, you're, the, you're one of the leaders in open source uh, 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 products and services. And uh, uh, interested in getting your perspective in this Apache uh, project that we are all working together on, uh, and a bigger picture on big data, uh, Hadoop and beyond. Uh, what's your perspective on, on the technologies? Yeah, so um, in addition to my perspective, um, given that we are you know, in the midst of this whole open source stuff, there's a couple of interesting uh, aspects of uh, big data. One is the center of gravity for most of the big data projects are in open source. I mean, today, if you look at uh, the open source community, there are over 100 projects Hadoop, Hive, you know, a whole bunch of alphabet soup of projects out there. But the center of gravity is all around open source, which you know, we feel very good about. The other aspect is um, uh, industry analyst reports suggest that 70, over 70% 70 of big data workloads run on top of Linux. Right? So if you combine these two factors together, what we are seeing from our customers is that they are interested in making sure that as innovation continues to happen in the open source space, uh, that it truly is open, it's interoperable, it's standardized. So those are kind of the three elements. So um, we announced our big data direction uh, last week on the 20th. 
And the seminal part of our announcement uh, in terms of the directional statement was uh, big data is all about storage. Uh, you know, you need to store your data. And we are going to be making available uh, the Hadoop plugin for Red Hat storage in the Apache community. So together with partners such as Intel, we want to continue to foster innovation in the open source community. Great, great, Ranga. Uh, Paul, you earlier shared with Boyd, uh, you, you know, Cisco's view. Uh, it would be great to get uh, another level of depth in that, how you perceive big data opportunity for an infrastructure vendor like Cisco. Yeah, Grish, I think that um, when you look at workloads like Hadoop, like HANA, they are indicative of some secular trends in the market, right, where just like in a network, the intelligence wants to move to the edge. In analytics, the uh, capability wants to be as close as possible to the application, right? And what that means is you see data uh, today, up until now, data has been structured, general terms, into hot, warm, and cold data. And what you see is an evolution towards hot data hosted on solid state, whether it be memory like HANA or, um, you know, solid state drives, and then cold data residing in um, active storage clusters that are increasingly more and more uh, Hadoop-based. So you can derive information from that cold data repository. Great. That's uh, wonderful to get your perspective on, on big data. So narrowing down from the largest group of big data to Intel distribution for Apache Hadoop software, uh, I think it will be great if you can share each one of you and what made you choose Intel as the partner to collaborate with on, uh, on Hadoop. So uh, maybe start here with, uh, with you, Paul, and, and come back the other way. Yeah, so two quick things. You know, the first one is uh, partnering is very strong in Cisco's DNA. And um, our CEO, John Chambers, likes to say that, you know, we partner to the death for partners that are there with us. And just like Intel was there with us in the early days of UCS, we like to be there with Intel in these early days of a huge big wave of analytics that we believe represent the future. Uh, that said, we see their innovation portfolio and technologies as being very complementary to what Cisco has. When I look at the optimizations that we can drive in the fabric, the optimizations that we can drive in automated provisioning and orchestration, either at the infrastructure level or at the application level, those are very complementary and, and they form a whole. So we're looking forward to uh, not only doing that between the two companies, but also working as leaders in the industry to continue building the ecosystem. Right. Um, and, and, you know, Paul, uh, you're right. It's really about the ecosystem. It's, you know, the industry has to come together to make sure that this wave that's get, getting generated by the uh, Hadoop-related uh, technologies actually becomes enterprise-ready and gets adopted uh, to to solve the big problems we all have in society and in commerce. So, uh, Ranga, it'll be great to get the Red Hat uh, view on what made you decide to work with Intel. I know we've been working together for a couple of quarters now. Yeah. Um, so if you can share that. Well, so um, much like what Paul said, um, Intel and Red Hat have had a long history of partnership uh, in multiple aspects, not just technology, you know, making sure that as uh, Intel continues to innovate on the hardware side, the operating system and the rest of the products work uh, take advantage of that. But in addition to technology partnerships, there have also been uh, numerous, uh, what I would call, go-to-market partnerships uh, to help customers uh, get the maximum out of the infrastructure that they can get. Uh, so today's, um, you know, as we're standing here talking about this, this is another dimension to a partnership. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we absolutely hold very close to uh, our partnership is making sure that a, all innovation that happens, the community gets, you know, gets benefit out of that. Out of that. So community-driven innovation, from our standpoint, is a seminal thing that goes across everything that we do. So our, you know, Intel and Red Hat's long history of open source uh, collaboration extending into uh, the Apache Hadoop and also working together in the market to, to make it successful. That's yep. great. Uh, so, Steve, again, you know, your perspective as a cloud service provider has unique requirements around Hadoop. So, uh, you know, if you can share what made you choose to uh, partner with Intel. Sure. I, I guess we're going to continue with theme here. Yeah. But um, going back to the early foundation of Savas, uh, Savas and Intel have, have worked closely 
uh, back to the Intel online services days. And, and so from that perspective, you know, we're very comfortable uh, working with Intel. Uh, Intel's used a lot in our, in our cloud platforms already. Today our clients are already having us host Intel-based platforms for them you know, all over the world. So from that perspective, very comfortable with, with the relationship. I think specifically um, as we get into the, the management of, of big data environments for clients, it's important to us that, that uh, what we saw with Intel's uh, distribution of Apache Hadoop is that um, really focusing on scalability, uh, security, and speed are important to us as well as our clients. As a service provider, we're focused on efficiencies mm -hmm. and, and providing kind of repeatable services and capabilities for our clients as they, as they come to us. And so we've seen that in, in the distribution, and we're confident moving forward that we'll be able to you know, build offerings and services and solutions around that. Great. Uh, Richard, last but not least, your perspective on uh, making uh, Intel as your partner for uh, Apache Do. SAP HANA has been an incredible journey. I've been on this journey together with Intel, as you know, from day one. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and the type of work that we've been able to do uh, across our labs mutually, uh, bring this technology forward into market has been nothing short of incredible. So we think that uh, we are bringing with SAP HANA in-memory technology and in-memory innovation we are to the market. We are revolutioni uh, re revolutionizing data management uh, by making it in-memory capable and, and ready. For big data, we believe that uh, Intel is the right partner for us to then uh, get uh, utilize Hadoop and utilize Hadoop-type big uh, data technologies uh, to present uh, a yeah, mission-critical, uh, fully enterprise-ready infrastructure uh, across the entire business. Now, how do we uh, move forward? How, what can we do uh, across HANA, across um, Hadoop? We have some amazing uh, technologies that we can jointly uh, innovate on and optimize on. Uh, some of that is in the works, as you know. Uh, at the same time, of course, we're going to take those technologies back into the open source uh, infrastructure so that um, all the other big data partners that we're working with, both in the Hadoop community and elsewhere and beyond that, um, can also leverage that technology. Oh, great. Um, so as we, as we come to the close of the panel, I'll put you guys on a spot and maybe ask you to give uh, uh, a short statement on what you think your customer would see the value out of your collaboration with Intel on the Intel distribution for Apache Hadoop software and uh, Steve in this time maybe start with you <laughs> so so uh, again as a service provider the the importance for us is to integrate the best technologies and capabilities and provide that in an industrialized fashion as a service uh, we think that um, uh, an ecosystem that's centered on um, the Intel distribution and, and really focused on on those security speed uh, scalability uh, from silicon all the way up through services mm -hmm is really where the market's going, and, and it's hopefully going to allow our clients to uh, achieve uh, the vision for big data faster than they could. Oh, great. I couldn't have said it better. That's great. Um, uh, Paul, you want to add to that? Yeah, so I think pretty quickly, um, we can always talk about the merits of technology. I like to think about the merits of being able to easily adopt technology. And I think to the extent that we can make uh, a Hadoop and a structured data analytics environment interface pretty seamlessly into existing environments that customers already have will be a, a big acceleration for adoption. And then the second value from Cisco will be scalability. Right. Um, and uh, Ranga, you want to add uh, your comment? Yeah. Um, so looking at it from a customer's perspective, I think a uh, majority of our customers are down a journey of open hybrid cloud, which is the ability to deploy their infrastructure on-prem in a private cloud and use a public cloud in a seamless fashion. And our belief is big data could be one of the killer apps for open hybrid cloud. And what customers want is industry leaders to help them in the journey. Yeah, that's great. So, um, uh, you know, Richard, uh, last again but not the least, uh, the important part here you talked about is how um, HANA and big data and, and Hadoop together solve some of the key challenges uh, customers have 
um, around analyzing large amounts of data in a, in a time-bound manner. So, you know, performance is obviously important. But beyond that, you know, this collaboration, what do you think is the end value the customers would see? Well, would I see? think it's to um, uh, big insights. Mm -hmm. uh, what we like to see in the context of SAP HANA at, at uh, the speed of thought mm -hmm. uh, across the entire enterprise, leveraging SAP HANA and leveraging big data infrastructures such as Hadoop, such as Intel Hadoop. Great. Great. Well, I thank you all for uh, making the trip and participating here on the panel. It's a pleasure. Um, I'll invite Boyd back for Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. <coughs> all right. Thank you very much, Richard, Steve, Ranga, Paul. It's very gratifying to have such a distinguished list of partners, all of whom have, uh, you know, really made a decision to uh, center their innovation around the Apache Hadoop framework on, on the Intel distribution uh, as a path moving forward. And you heard all of them talk about uh, working with Intel very closely, but all of them embracing this notion of community as well. So, uh, in summary, we're in the market with an offering for uh, our distribution of Apache Hadoop. We think we provide a unique uh, position in this industry. It's a, it's a lot of per participants. It's a great community. Uh, but to have a large company providing a consistent, stable foundation and a commitment to driving that foundation with the underlying hardware enhancements on a sustained basis. Because, you know, our data center roadmap is very, very robust moving forward with new CPU capabilities, new non-volatile memory capabilities, new fabric technologies, and we want to make sure that the Hadoop framework stays on the leading edge of those. Uh, we're really building off of a heritage of technology uh, and while it may seem like a departure for Intel uh, to provide an offering around open source software, we view this as a building block, and that's what we do. Uh, we bring building blocks to market, and customers innovate around those building blocks and build wonderful solutions and create growth in our industry. Uh, we're going to continue to focus on open source and making sure that the innovations are a rising tide that lifts all boats. Uh, we believe that we can continue to innovate at a pace where customers will uh, want to work with us as the market leader, but the goal is not to uh, fork the code or have any kind of dissension within the community. We want to drive this to be open. Uh, and then finally, you know, we have a very partner-focused approach. Uh, we, we, we saw the list of very, very large partners. We have an, uh, a very wonderful list of smaller partners around the world who are also looking uh, to build on this, and we expect uh, to have a substantial impact not just on participating in, in the market for Hadoop, but also in growing uh, the market for Hadoop, which will provide gains not only to us as a software provider, uh, but also as a data center provider. And with that, I'd like to uh, invite Mark Miller on stage, and uh, he'll host uh, the Q&A session both uh, for folks online. You can submit your questions as well as uh, here Excellent. locally. Thank you, Boyd. Yes, as uh, Boyd mentioned, we have a couple of mic runners in the room. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand, ask that you state your name and organization you're with. Online, there is not uh, a place to go ahead and ask your question. Feed them into the room, and we'll take some from the web as well. Uh, so we have about 10 or 15 minutes worth if, uh, if there's any questions for Boyd or the partners, and we'll be available after this as well if you guys had some specific questions. Yes, Mark. Hey, Dan, Mark Hockman with Slashdot. Um, you guys, have, you said a couple of times that you were going to return these these improvements to the open source community. I think the, the phrase was as soon as as soon as you can. Can you give us a little bit more of a granular time frame on that? Are we talking about weeks, months? Well, we don't control it. The community is is uh, controlled by uh, the, the the you know the trunk of what is actually in Apache Hadoop. Formally, for everybody, is controlled by the committers, uh, and we're hoping to work with the committers to explain why we've made the enhancements we've made. Uh, what technically we've done, uh, and get those enhancements back in. The enhancements themselves are kind of a steady stream of uh, JIRAs that we're submitting. Uh, we launched the, um, a bigger program around Rhino yesterday that had more of a collection of, of uh, elements because it spans uh, a number of projects. So uh, if you want to have a consistent security and authentication framework across the projects, you have to kind of work across it. So that Rhino project was... Uh, was submitted yesterday, but we'll submit them uh, on a relatively regular pace. We can't necessarily control their adoption into the uh, into the kernel. Uh, we can only do that as part of the community, like everybody else. I believe one up front, Josh. 
Hi, Boyd. Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, so my question is, uh, how many or, or do you plan to, uh, to have Intel employees actually actively committing to uh, Apache projects uh, around Hadoop? And uh, in terms of kind of thought leadership and, and kind of integrating yourself in that community, how do you plan to you know, compete with, uh, you know, it's all about street cred to some degree in, in the Apache Hadoop community. How do you plan to compete with the Clauderas and the Horton Works of the world who have some of the, you know, the leading uh, Hadoop uh, developers, people, who, you know, Doug Cunning who started Hadoop. Um, how do you plan to kind of uh, integrate yourself into that community? Well, it's interesting the way you framed it. Uh, there's, there's kind of two elements to an open source business. One is the community. Uh, where I don't view us as competing with Cloudera or Hortonworks or anybody else at all, uh, we're collaborating to drive forward the open source framework. So we have today three committers uh, that work in Intel, uh, and we're you know always looking to expand our influence in the community. Uh, you know, we started off many years ago. We were not a primary contributor to Linux, and now in any given quarter, we're the number one contributor to the Linux kernel. So uh, we're in this for the long haul, and we do and plan to. Uh, add value to the community over time. But at that level, I, I would not view us as, as competing with anybody who are a part of the open source community. It's about how do we make a better open source project together. And in the marketplace, I think we have uh, some strong advantages. Uh, you know, the Hadoop Manager, which is kind of a utility around it, we think offers value to customers. Uh, we think customers will value, uh, you know, the, the scale that we bring. Uh, in terms of global presence, uh, a long, you know, longevity, uh, as well as our technology value add. Customers know that as they work with us, uh, particularly on the leading edge, on the R&D edge, prior to things getting committed, that we're going to be able to anticipate the newest technology and deliver the best results. So I think as a commercial offering, we have some strong advantages. Uh, but inside the community, I certainly wouldn't view us as competing. I'd view us as collaborating. Great. Do we have any other questions in the room or online? If, okay, we'll take one in the room. Thanks, Boyd. You've said yourself you've been at this for some time. What's gotten you over the line today in terms of making the announcement and going formal with the distribution? You know, it's a, it's a really good question. Uh, you know, we, we started this out uh, kind of based on customer demand. Uh, and as we built the business in, in China, it became pretty quickly apparent to us that uh, this was a need globally. So we had made the decision uh, strategically to uh, broaden our footprint in this space really all the way uh, back over probably a year ago. Um, and then the decision to announce it today is really because we wanted to have time to work with customers like NextBio uh, and have uh, some evidence locally that, that customers were behind the product. We know uh, that I think companies like China Mobile and China Unicom have a huge amount of credibility, but we wanted to have a footprint in, in, uh, in the United States. Uh, and we really feel like the 3.0 release of Hadoop that has many of these characteristics around security and performance that I highlighted today uh, is a breakthrough release and has the, the strongest opportunity to deliver value. Uh, and that is available really at the end of this quarter uh, and then becomes available globally uh, in the second quarter. So it's a combination of, of the decision to go has been uh, really some time ago that we strategically decided that, uh, that we wanted to participate in the market to drive it. Uh, and then the tactical reason for launching it today is a combination of getting enough experience with U.S. customers and lining up around the 3.0 release. Great. Yes, in the front. Or, yeah. Hi, Don. <clears throat> Don Clark from the Wall Street Journal. So as you've discussed, you've been uh, big contributors to Linux, and I know you've worked on Android and other open source things as well. Why make... You know, you didn't really sell a commercial distribution of Linux, but you're selling a commercial distribution of Hadoop. Why, why the different approaches in the two areas? Well, I mean, Intel is a, a company that has grown in our capabilities around software a lot since the, you know, the start of the, uh, the Linux movement. And, and, of course, we have great partners in the, in the Linux community that are, uh, that are driving the kernel forward. Um, you know, who, who's to say that if, uh, if the Linux phenomena weren't happening today, you know, we wouldn't try to do the same thing. I think it's a little bit more of, uh, you know, when we have an ability to t anticipate a trend as big as the Hadoop trend, as big as we expect it to be, uh, you know, I think just by taking an influence model, we wouldn't have an opportunity to grow the market as fast. You know, we talked a little bit, and one of the earlier questions was, you know, how quickly can you get your enhancements into uh, the Hadoop trunk? And the reality is by participating commercially, 
uh, with real customers who are saying, this is the things I want, uh, I'm confident that the community will move faster than if we simply had technologies that we were bringing forward to say we think customers might want these. So I think a lot of it is speed, uh, you know, and, and then a lot of it is uh, our desire uh, to deliver more and more value uh, as, an, or as a company as we built, you know, software competencies into being not just, a, you know, an adjacent competency to our hardware competencies, but really being a core competency of Intel as a company. So we're a software company now. I mean, we, we are. We're one of the biggest ones, certainly with uh, the subsidiaries like McAfee and Wind River. Um, but even in our core business, you know, more and more of our developers are software developers, not hardware developers. So we're a very different company than we were many years ago when the other trends hit. Uh, so it's time for us to, to make the market move at a pace that we think is, that customers will benefit from by participating. Here in the middle. So, board. Just building on that, how do you define right here? Here you go, right? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Sorry. You're dark back there. D Doug Friedman, RBC Capital Markets. How do you define success, and how do we think about this as a revenue opportunity for Intel? You put up there that this is going to assist in selling processors into sure. the server space. But what's the breakdown? Is the software load, what percentage of the total spend versus processor load that a customer is going to have here? Well, the way, the way I look at it, um, and I won't give specific numbers, but I will give you a, a ratio of how we think about it, that um, I'd expect for every uh, dollar of operating margin we generate incrementally in the software business that we'll have roughly a, a four times a multiplier effect on the data center business. So when people say, you know, what is your driving motivation, I think in the end uh, the strategy will have a greater effect on Intel's revenue and operating margin uh, by accelerating the growth of the data center, uh, but that software revenue component is meaningful. Uh, and also, I believe, by participating in software with, a, with an offering uh, that, you know, customers are voting with their own pocketbooks around, uh, will have a much greater influence on the trajectory of the data center business itself. But we think in general terms about a ratio about four to one. And how do you define success? Oh, the question is how do we, how do we define success? You know what, I'm not going to lay out a metric. Not, not today. I think, uh, obviously, we are planning to participate as a leader in this space. So if in a few years uh, we're not viewed as one of the leaders in Hadoop, then, we, then, then I think it's fair to say we'll have failed. But I won't put a specific metric on it. Yes, uh, Krishna Shankar, Roth Capital. Just following up on Doug's question relating to the opportunity for Xeon processors and data center, uh, what portion of the data center business today, you know, is driven by things like open source computing, Hadoop, and things like that? And what could that percentage be in a few years? And can you talk about the relevance of Xeon versus Atom-based uh, data center architectures for things like Hadoop? Yeah, so the, the first question is uh, how much of the current data center market uh, runs on open source? Um, then it, it gets very difficult to answer that question. A significant chunk runs on Linux, uh, as, and, as uh, Ranga mentioned. Um, but then when you look at that, you, you'd say uh, you have many environments are mixed. If you've got packaged applications running on Linux, is that open source? If you have you know, things like uh, Hadoop running, but uh, you have elements of uh, packaged applications running on Hadoop. So I think it's, I, I think it's difficult to answer your question. Uh, you know, a lot of the market, a significant chunk of the market, is running some open source software. You know, I mean, Microsoft uh, is working on Hadoop. Uh, so is Hadoop running on Microsoft? Would you consider that open source? Uh, both. So, you know, many, many Xeons, if not most Xeons, uh, are running a combination of open source and packaged applications. Um, so I think relative over time, uh, we have projections. I didn't put specific numbers on the for the volumes that we expect around Hadoop, but they are significant. Now to your second question, um, how do I see Atom in the Hadoop space? Um, you know, so far, the, uh, mo the, the vast majority of the deployments we're doing, uh, customers are getting value out of uh, the faster, higher in CPUs. We showed that with the uh, Xeon 5600 versus 2600 example. Uh, and our expectation is that the more utility people get out of their Hadoop clusters, the more they're going to want a balance of compute, uh, network, and, uh, and storage. Uh, so I think a lot of the cases you see where people are talking about Hadoop as a low-end workload, uh, there's a couple of phenomena. One is they're using one gig Ethernet, which I would not recommend. 
I'd recommend that anybody deploying a, a cluster today use 10 gig uh, Ethernet. Uh, if you use one gig, you have a legitimate chance to choke off the uh, the performance of the of the cluster, and therefore you wouldn't see the same kind of deltas in performance for a low end CPU versus a high end CPU. But that's not a good thing. That's that's like saying you got a a really fast car with a really bad transmission, and you know therefore you should make the you know the engine less capable. It's like no, make the transmission more capable. Um, so as over time, we might see opportunities uh, for, for Atom, uh, and we'll take a look at that. But uh, right now, we're in a customer-driven uh, technology mode. There are some people in the industry, I think, in a technology-driven mode uh, as, as kind of a startup in this space. We're, we're really looking at customer demand, and the customer demand has skewed toward higher end. Uh, we have a banking customer in China who actually deployed a Hadoop on an eight-way node. Uh, a, you know, kind of what you think of as a big iron scale up node uh, because they got much better performance results out of, the, out of a really fat node. Uh, but the sweet spot is kind of high end of the, the, the two-way Xeon market seems to be the sweet spot for our customers. We have time for one more question. Okay. Anything on the web? No? All right. Thank you. Thank you All right. Sir. Thank you very much.